Okay, everyone. Hello. Um, this is directed to all the classes that I that I teach in any particular semester. If it's uh, regarding Newtonian mechanics, whether it's calculus based or non calculus based, this particular discussion, uh, I'm just trying to re clarify some stuff that I had already said in person, and we can always talk in person some more if we need further clarification. But this is from the survey book. What is to follow? It's from the survey book, topic four, page 118, problem 73. Just want to look at it a little, a little bit again, just kind of look at, at this and, and, and maybe, uh, maybe look at some other aspects of, of this problem, maybe another way to look at it. Um, let's talk about a number of things here. There is a situation in which friction is present. It's only present on the tabletop and the amount of frictional force that's present is F equals mu sub k m2g. Uh, mu sub k times the normal, normal force. Because everything's horizontal here, as far as the tabletop is concerned, uh, the normal force will be mu sub k m2g. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, m2g will be the normal force. Mu sub k times m2g is the force of friction, and it opposes... Friction will always oppose the motion that's taking place. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit. The setup here is, let's say these are somehow held stationary. Somebody's holding this whole system, maybe has their hand up here and is holding the system, and then they're told to let go of the system and see what happens. Well, as we said, wherever the motion takes place, uh, there's, there's no frictional force anywhere other than between mass number two and the tabletop. The pulleys have no friction, they're massless, there's no moments of inertia to consider in this problem. Uh, the pulleys are massless, the ropes are massless, and there's no friction except for uh, what is happening between mass M sub 2 and the tabletop. This horizontal tabletop and mass sub 2, there is going to be a frictional force of mu sub k M2g, as we've already said. If there's motion, wherever the motion is, the frictional force will go the opposite direction. Well, I've already kind of told you what's, what's going to happen here. Here's, here's, why, here's why it is what it is. Um, we are told that mu sub k is 0.35, m1 is 4 kilograms, m2 is 1 kilogram, m3 is 2 kilograms. m3 is 2 kilograms, m2 so M3 is two kilograms, M2 is one kilogram, M1 is uh, the largest mass that's present here. It's gonna drive the whole, the whole process. This motion will take place in the counterclockwise direction. As we're looking right here, in other words, there's gonna be, there's gonna be an acceleration downward on the left-hand side. And since everything's tied up, uh, there's gonna be a left-handed motion for, toward, for the acceleration's gonna happen in the left-handed motion up here. So to the left, you know, M2 goes to the left, M1 goes down, and M3 goes up because they're all connected. M1, uh, more specifically the force associated with the gravitational field on M1, M1G is the most powerful pull uh, in this whole situation. Well, the way we looked at it, and there's a number of ways to look at it really, so when we try to see what's going on here, guys, let's, uh, consistent with what we've said at other times as well, Looking at this right here, we know that M1G pulls down really hard. M3G also pulls down, but not as hard as M1G does. So M1G has the strongest pull. M3G has a smaller pull. There's a tug of war. M1G wins it. Therefore, the motion that's gonna take place, the acceleration that's gonna take place, is gonna take place in the counterclockwise direction. In addition to that, this guy will pull down and it'll pull against this. But this guy getting pulled, in a sense, gives a pullback due to Newton's third law. So there's a T1 pull up this way and a T1 pull that way. Same thing here. There's a pull down and then action reaction, Newton's third law, there's, 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 there's consequences to that. So there's the T2 pull back. Notice T2 is bigger T2 is a bigger arrow than M3G. T2 is a bigger arrow than M3G. 
uh, M1G is a bigger arrow than T1, and T1 is a bigger arrow than T2. That's all consistent with region 1, region 2, region 3. You can treat them as their own separate universe, each one of them, 1, 2, 3, and say, okay, well, the tug of war is won by this one, upward acceleration. The tug of war is won by this one, to the left acceleration. The tug of war is won by this one, uh, downward acceleration, and that is... As we had said, it's going to be going to the left. Uh, it's going to, going to the left, you know, the left up here to the left, up here up, up here down. It's going to be going counterclockwise, as we, as we have said. So that's our situation. We are told what M1, M2, and M3 are in terms of specific numbers. We're also told what, what mu sub k is. So we're told a lot. Uh, there's things that we're not told. We don't know what the acceleration is going to be. And it's the same in all instances because they're attached. And we don't know what the tension T1 is, nor do we know what the tension T2 is. We don't know what A is. We don't know what T1 is. We don't know what T2 is. A, T1, and T2, those three quantities are unknown for us. But if I look at, all, if I look at each one of these three regions, I can establish an equation, an equation associated with one, an equation associated with two, an equation associated with three. I can have three equations and three unknowns, and that solves the whole process. That, whole, that solves the whole problem. So, and like I said, we did this before, guys. I just wanted to make sure, ah, I made the film. I wanted to make sure the people that are in my class kind of saw this again, uh, if necessary, for us. Um, let's take a look. We know from Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. If there's an unbalanced force, there will be a resulting acceleration that'll take place. Let's figure this out. Let's go to region one, then let's go to region two, let's go to region three, and see what kind of commentary we can think up, guys. Well, in region one, due to Newton's third law, we've got a lot going on with the T1s in, in different places. Newton's third law is, is kind of why that's happening. We got a T1 right here, and we got an M1G. M1G is a stronger pull than T1. How much stronger of a pull is it? Well, it's M1G, but it ain't going to go freely. It's being fought. It's being fought by T1. The difference between the two is the amount of unbalanced force. It is the resultant force. The subtraction here, the, the difference in the length of the arrows, is the unbalanced force. That unbalanced force is going to result in this guy right here being accelerated with acceleration A. So it's M1 A equals that. Come over here. There's a T1, which is stronger than T2. The difference between the two is an unbalanced force. And the result of that is that M2 will experience an acceleration of A. Well, the unbalanced force is the resultant force, and it's manifested. This is where the forces are being manifested. Is the mass moving with an acceleration? Yes. Why is it moving with an acceleration? There are unbalanced forces present. The forces here are not balanced. There's a net acceleration going down this way. M1, M1A for the M1A is the resultant force. Here, uh, M2A is the resultant force when this tug of war happens. And right here, the resultant force is going to be T2 is bigger than M3G. So let me, I, I'm sorry guys, I just did some, uh, the argument is basically correct, but T1 is stronger. T1 we said was stronger than T2. So let's make sure we got that there. Uh, for the third scenario, so T1 is stronger than T2, so you go T1 minus T2, and here we go, T2, um, minus M3G. And that results, well, there's an unbalanced force here, how is that manifested? Well, T2 is stronger than, M, than M3G by how much? T2 minus M3G, that difference results in somebody being accelerated. They're all being accelerated at the same rate of acceleration. They're all being accelerated at the same rate of acceleration. 
So we got this right here. Well, this is pretty significant, you guys. Uh, we already, I mean, there's a lot of non-numeric symbolism present here, I guess you could say, but not really to worry. They gave us M1. Forgive me, there's one more thing, guys. I always forget this, too. What else is going on here? We said there was friction present. T1, T1 is stronger than T2, yeah? T1 is being fought by T2, and it's being fought by the force of friction, mu sub k m2g. T2 and mu sub k m2g, you could add them together, you could add them together and then subtract them. It means the same thing. You could go T2, T2 is trying to, T2 is trying to pull to the right. Uh, mu sub k, M2G is also pulling. You know, friction is resisting. Friction is more or less resisting toward the right. It's trying to keep things going toward the right, if you allow me to say that. There's a resistance toward the right that friction is putting up, and T2 is also putting up a friction toward a resistance toward the right. So friction is more or less, you can say, sort of pulling toward the right. T2 is pulling to the right. They both have a rightward tendency. Whereas T1 is trying to pull to the left, and when you subtract those two, when you subtract these two, you got T1 minus T2 plus a negative mu sub k m2g plus a negative plus a negative mu sub k m2g or minus 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 T2 minus minus T2 minus mu sub k m2g. That's the same as putting these guys together in a sum and then subtracting them. Bring the minus inside, hits him, bring the minus inside, hits him, and we're right here. And that's, that's the purpose of how it goes right there. Well, yeah, I mean, these two guys are fighting any sort of motion to the left. T1 overcomes both of them. And it overcomes them bigger than both of them put together. It's bigger than both of these put together. Uh, bigger than both of these put together, you can write it like that, or write it like this, you can write it like this too, but eventually you want to probably try to get it down to here, but these mean the, the, this and that, and they mean the same thing. And T1 is stronger than the sum of both of these that are being subtracted from T1. The sum of both of these being subtracted from T1 is the same as this, it's the same as that. Um, it wins it, and there's gonna be leftward motion on top. This one wins, and there's going to be downward motion to the far left. This one wins, and there's going to be upward motion. So everybody's going, there's basically a counterclockwise motion with the same, uh, the same acceleration A. They already told us what M1, M2, and M3 are, and they told us what mu sub k is. We don't know A, we don't know T1, we don't know T2. There's three things that we do not know. A, T1, and T2. Three unknowns we have, and we also have three independent equations in those three unknowns. Three equations and three unknowns, it's a done deal. That's how you solve something like this. Um, so, I mean, as we're saying that, let me just kind of see to what, to what degree of, of, of specificity I go with some of this. See what we can say here. Um, so we got this right here. It's about as simple as that, you guys. So if you're gonna do this, and let me see if I can set this up. Uh, what, what can you say? What will you say? Well, I'll tell you what. I eventually wanna solve for T1. And I eventually wanna solve for T2. And if I play it right, I might be in pretty good shape. Let me see what I can do. Let me, uh, let me just take this guy up top and let me at least do a setup here. Let me add a positive T1 on each side and subtract M1A, and I end up getting T1 equals M1G minus M1A. True. We know that if you factor out the M1, if you factor out the M1 from here, you got this. Okay. Sounds pretty good to me. All right, so let, we're looking at that. So let me put that up here. 
kind of write it by itself. I have too many, you know, I'm trying to minimize all the things I, I could write here. Uh, so we got M1, G minus A, and that'll give us what the tension is in rope associated with that. Now again, the ropes are massless, they don't stretch, the pulleys are massless, there's no friction associated with them. Only here is the friction, and that's on the tabletop. Um, T2, add a positive M3, M3G on each side, and we got M3G plus M3A. Let me factor out the, it's pretty good to me. Uh, so we got these two here. Right? This is pretty significant because we're going to see a lot of uh, a lot of commonality going on here, guys. When you're doing some of this stuff, uh, even when you change up the problem a little bit, there's going to be some things that are very common. Well, okay. There's a lot to look at. There's a lot to look at already right off the bat. This is consistent. Um, let's see exactly how I want. I want to say. Well, let me let me not say too much. I guess. Uh, when we look at something like this, let's see exactly what's going on vis-a-vis -vis the tensions and everything else. I, I already kind of know that T1's got to be a stronger pull than T2 for this thing to move to the left. Well, I'm looking at this. I don't, you know, I don't know if I'm if it's very obvious to look at. I do know that M1 is pretty big compared to M2. M1 is four kilograms. M3, M1 is four kilograms. M3 is two kilograms. So. Perhaps there's something here that needs to be looked at. But let's, let's wait. Let's wait a little bit and see what we can say about this. Um, we look at this and we can say a couple things. Uh, let me, number of ways you can, we can do this. We, we can kind of get, we can get into this a whole bunch of ways, guys, actually, but Let's, right now, given some time constraints, let's just, let's just play this, how we can play it. I got three equations here and three unknowns. It looks like there's a lot more unknowns, but they already told you what M1, M2, and M3 are, and what mu sub k is. There's really just the A, the, the T1, and the T2 that are the unknowns. Just three of those things, with three, with three equations here. Take this, this, and this, and add them together. You got M1A, M2A, M3A. Factor the A out of there, and you end up getting You know, add the, add the left sides of the equation and you end up getting this. Add the right sides of the equation. Now be careful here. Here's M1G. Here's a minus T1. A minus T1 and a positive T1 cancel. Here's a minus T2 and a positive T2. They cancel. We got M1G and everybody who did not cancel, which is mu sub K, M2G, minus mu sub 3. Uh, my, uh, I'm sorry, mu sub k, m2g, minus m3g. And we got all this. Again, guys, when you added all these together, the way they originally looked, just to kind of, I think we're okay with this, but just, just in case there's an issue, m1a, m2a, m3a, they're all added together. Pull an a out of there. Look at it. Pull an a out of there. And you got M1, M2, M3, A. You got this. Pretty important equation. Uh, let's see this one. Can I pull a G out of here? There's a G here. There's a G here. There's a G there. Yeah, sure can. Look at it right here. Let's pull a G out of there and see what happens. Um, Divide this entire quantity, divide by this entire quantity on each side, and we end up getting this. We end up getting, um, sorry guys, it should have been like that, okay. Uh, we've got M1, mu sub k, M2, minus M3, M1, M2, M3, the whole thing times G. I pulled the G out of there. Well, okay, this is pretty interesting. 
This is for the situation where there's friction involved. If you grind all the numbers in there that you got to grind in there, you guys, um, we're going to get all the answers that we want. There's going to be with, you know, and here's where, again, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to save a little bit of room here, guys. I don't want to lose anybody either, but let's see here. We got, here's the friction scenario that we're dealing with right now, that we're solving right now. And then later on, they're going to say, what if there's no friction? There's the no friction scenario too. Well, that's kind of interesting. Because here, uh, here there is, let me see, I can still be heard here, guys. All right, I can. All right. Um, here, guys, we have a situation where Notice these equations don't have any kind of friction associated with them. That's going to be the case. This is the case here. There's no real friction explicitly put into these equations. And that's when there is a friction scenario. And there's no friction in, in the T1, T2 equations, at least using the ones I chose. Equation 3 and equation 1. From equation 3, I got this. From equation 1, I got that. There's really no friction scenario in there. So that's, that's of interest. Um, when there's no friction, there's, there are going to be the same equations. Yeah, but there's going to be different numbers involved. So let's not get too deceived by that. Uh, let's look at what is happening, guys, and figure out how we're going to do this. So I just want to make sure I'm heard, guys. That's just it. I'm trying to figure out here. Okay, I should be. Yeah, I'm okay. Um, so we're looking pretty good. In the friction scenario, we've got an area. Uh, forgive me. We've, we've got an acceleration. We've got a T1 and we've got a T2. Now, you're just going to plug in the numbers uh, and solve. Well, okay. M1, M2, M3 are 4, 1, and 2, respectively. And mu sub K is, is, and mu sub K is 0.35. This is 4. This is 1. So 0.35 times 1 is 0.35, and this is 2. Minus 0.35 and minus 2 is, in totality, minus 2.35 2 from the 4. 4 minus 2.35 is 1.65, and the bottom is 4, 1, 2, is 7. So it's 1.65. 1.65, or just do the math right here, guys. The 0.35 times 1 is 0.35. This is 2. Minus 0.35, and then minus again is, is more of a minus. So minus 0.35 minus 2 is minus a total of 2.35. Minus a total of 2.35 from 4 is 1.65. 1.65 divided by the total mass of the system uh, is indeed... Uh, you know, 1.65 divided by 7 times G, which is 9.8 or 9.81. And when you actually do that, you get 2.31, 2.31 meters per second per second. You plug that A into here, 2.31. You use 9.8 or 9.81. You use this guy as two, two times, two times this difference of 9.8 minus 2.31. It should spit out the answer for you of 29.96. And that's Newton's, forgive me. Okay, that's Newton's. And do the same thing here. Put the 9.8, 9.81 if you want, and then the 2.31 in here. Add them together, and then multiply by... By two, I'm, forgive me guys, this was a different number actually. The, the M1 was four. Four times the quantity, 9.81 minus 2.31. Uh, you know, 9.81 minus 2.31 is 7.5. 7.5 times four is about 30. That's where we're getting the ballpark of 30 right here. That's a four, I'm, forgive me here. This is the two, you add these two together, the 9.81 and the 2.3. Uh, 3-1, uh, you should be getting something in the ballpark 
of 12.11 times uh, times two, and you know that's going to be 24 something, 24.22. And, that's, and that makes sense. T2 has got to be weaker than T1. T1 wins that fight. That's why it's going to the left. This is not a great big acceleration. It's certainly not what it would be if it was in free fall because there's all this pulling going on. There's all this pulling going on, you guys. So that's where that's coming from. In a situation of no friction, you guys, in a situation of no friction, the area, uh, forgive me, the acceleration, forgive me, guy, I keep saying area, I think I'm in a geometry class or something, right? But, uh, which is its own beautiful form of, of mathematics as well, right? Different, different branch, I guess, of the mathematics. But looking at a situation like this, you guys, how are you going to do something like this? Well, you know, in a situation where there is no friction, you guys, you simply, you simply block this. Mu sub k would be zero. There's no frictional force. And these are your, then these become your three equations and three unknowns. Well, let's find what A is. Add these together. You still get that. Add these together. Everybody gets canceled out. But in this case, it's just those guys left over. There's no frictional force stopping you. So if you divide by M1, M2, M3, uh, and that's that's kind of what you know what we're talking about. You get up here. It's what it is. Well, what is it? Well, earlier I just said it was one point. Earlier when I did those subtractions, the four minus two point. 4 minus 2.35 was 1.65 on top and 7 on the bottom, and we ended up getting 2.31 meters per second squared. Here it's 4 minus 2 is 2. 2 divided by 7, 2 over 7, rather than 1.65 over 7. Well, wait a minute. 2 over 7, 2 over 7 is bigger than 1.65 over 7. It's going to be a bigger answer. The acceleration is going to be bigger. That's pretty obvious that the acceleration is going to be bigger. There's no frictional force preventing a greater acceleration from happening. So it makes sense with the no friction scenario. And that's what I was trying to say last time, guys, when we're doing something like that. So you, you look at it, uh, you know, let's, let's see. The, and then again, the, and I, it's all in the notes, guys. Those of you who have me in, in, as a teacher uh, using this particular class, the non-calc treatment, Newtonian mechanics, you're going to see all this stuff. At the end of the day... Uh, this comes out to an acceleration of 2.8 meters per second squared. If you put the 2.8 up here and start playing the games, uh, it's going to be a smaller number. 9.8 minus 2.8 is 7. 4 times 7 is 28. That ain't, that ain't as big as almost 30. This is about 30, guys. Almost should have put 30 on there, to be honest with you, but okay, close enough. It's close to 30. Here, 4 times 7 is 28. Not the same. But we'll talk about it. The other one is, why don't you take, this is a 2, this is 9.8, this is uh, 2.8. Uh, that is going to be, well, I mean, it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be 12.6. 12.6, you double it, you're going to get 25.2. That's a different number. It's pretty fascinating in its own right um, how this stuff plays out. Again, here's the friction scenario, guys. And we got, like I said, we got this with the friction scenario. And here's the T1 and here's the T2. Regarding that, for the... No friction scenario, you got this, and a little different dynamic. You got, you got that, uh, you got this, and you got this. Well, what does that mean? It's kind of interesting. I guess it all makes sense. I guess the, the thing that's really of interest, this is about 30 with the friction scenario, 
and this is not as much. This is 28. This is about 30, and this is 28. So with the friction scenario, T1 is stronger. I guess it would have to be stronger. T1 is going to pull back harder and not let you accelerate. So it makes sense that T1 would be bigger in the friction scenario than it would be in the non-friction scenario. The non-friction scenario, it's not resisting you as much. Why isn't it resisting you as much? There's no friction in the non-friction scenario, so you're not getting pulled back. You're not getting the same pullback. So it makes sense that in the friction scenario, T1 is stronger. It makes sense. Um, well, okay, interesting. If T1 is stronger uh, in the non-friction scenario, um, you know what do you say? What do you say about that? Well, let's 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 kind of talk about it. The T1 makes sense. The other one. Uh, they're, they're off right here. This is, this is kind of odd how that works out. Well, the T2 is essentially, uh, for the non-friction scenario, it makes sense that T2 is going to yank harder to get this guy to accelerate more if there's no friction. So T would, T2 would be bigger that way. And that's something I tried to bring out last time. I, I, as, as always, guys, I run out of time. Those of you who have me as a teacher know, I always tell you guys, I wish I had you guys many hours a week. I mean, 10 hours a week would be great to be talking to you guys. Um, it's, it's, it's better than just three hours a week. But, I mean, the practicality of the situation doesn't always work that way. Always make sure you watch what you're doing, guys. Do your best. There's a lot of resources there. Use them. I think you guys can do great. Okay? So... So that's, that's something I, I just thought was very much of interest, uh, how, how the whole thing played out, guys. Uh, you got, you know, here's, here's the T1, here's the, the T2, here's the T1, here's the T2. Not sure, guys, what the quality of the video is sometimes. It's kind of a new situation for us, but there it is two different environments to, take, to have this take place. You simply get rid of the mu sub k m2g when you're talking about a non-friction scenario in this circumstance. When you do talk about a friction scenario, you put the mu sub k m2g. When you're not talking about it, you get rid of the mu k uh, m2g. Simple as that. For friction, this stays, obviously. For non-friction, we get rid of it. And we play the game. And it's still three equations and three unknowns to be able to do it. So that's something I wanted to kind of, we didn't get a chance to talk about it. I mean, I just didn't get a chance to finish it sometimes, guys. It'd be nice if the classes lasted a little longer, had a little more time with you guys. Uh, this is definitely of interest, guys. Let me see if I can maybe move on and maybe say something else regarding some, some things that can happen here. Um, this is all right. Let me get rid of some of this stuff. I, again, remember some of these things, how they play out, the equations that work here. Could we solve, now let's go to something else. I mean, could, could we solve something regarding, um, um, regarding maybe looking at this and trying to find the acceleration by some other means? There's a number of ways to find the acceleration, you guys, on, in, the, in this circumstance. You could have, like, right off the bat, uh, if there was no if there was no friction if there was no friction whatsoever you could say wait a minute they're all tied together there's an m1 there's an m2 there's an m3 let me add all those masses together to get one large mass uh, to talk about this it's one large mass all tied up together m1 m2 m3 acts like one large mass which is m1 plus m2 plus m3 there's going to be an acceleration let's get let's get the, the pull they're doing here well, what's going on? This guy is pulling down really hard, M1G. This one's not pulling down as hard. There's a tug of war between them. Uh, let's, say there was, let's say there was no friction. Let's get the friction out. Let's say no friction. Then it's simply M1 minus M3. M1G minus M3G is the quantity M1 minus M3 times G. If you divide by A on each side, you get the acceleration just like that without even doing the three separate universes of one, two, 
and three, but then eventually you got to get somewhere to find where the tensions are. If you're talking about friction being involved, and we just had it and I just erased it, obviously, um, but we can say, minus mu sub k, m2g, uh, forgive me, not the g in there, though, because uh, we, we already could factor that out. We did all, you, you, could, you could play it like this. You could say, um, mu sub k, m2. Now, where did that come from? Well, I say, look, this is a player pulling down real hard. This is another player pulling down much harder. This guy wins it. Yeah, yeah, this guy's got an ally. He's got friction also helping him out. So what you got is mu sub k m2g minus m3g are pulling, and m1g is all by itself. So you got a situation, if you're just gonna be adding them, you'd say, wait a minute, m1g, that's the strong one. Uh, mu sub k m2g is resisting. That's the amount of resistance it's providing, and M3 is the amount of res M M3G is the amount of resistance provided there. So in other words, M1G is the strongest of all, and resisting what M1G wants to do is friction and M3G. Well, if you factor a G out of there, that's where you're getting this scenario. You're getting M1 minus mu sub k M2 minus M3, the whole thing G, divide by the sum, the entire sum, M1 plus M2 plus M3 on each side, and you're talking about, in the case of no friction, this is the way it's looking, and in the case where there is friction, there's your mu sub k, M2, and there's your minus, so, and you, and you get this, when you, when you divide by this parentheses quantity on each side, you get that one. Notice how I did it, I just say, hey look, Strongest of all, being fought by friction, being fought by that, I'll make those two subtracted from this, and I'll say that the total acceleration is going to be the sum of, well, it's going to be the to some acceleration is going to happen, and M1 plus M2 plus M3, that total mass times A is the unbalanced force. The unbalanced force is, the unbalanced force is, by how much does this, does this one defeat friction and defeat this? This pulls down. This tries to stop what M1G is doing. This also tries to stop what M1G is doing. That's why we had, we had it as M1G minus mu k m 2 g minus M3G. I just factored the G out. That's all that it is, guys. In the end, notice, in either scenario, you don't have to worry about the friction with T1. It does get accounted for in solving three independent equations and three unknowns. That's for sure. But you can also just look at it and say, you know, this is a big time setup. I mean, we get to here, we get to here, and you got three equations and three unknowns, and you can do that by the elimination method, the substitution method at some level. Um, technically, you could even graph them, but that's, that's, that's pretty crazy in three-dimensional space. Or Kramer's rule. You know how to do three equations and three unknowns. Got to be able to do it, and you're there. All right, uh, I would like to take a look at a situation. I'm kind of just doing this sort of on the fly in a sense, but I mean, I, I will kind of look at this and say, okay, let me look at this and not look at, uh, you know, not, not, you know, let's just remember the numbers that we got right here, guys, and see what kind of an answer we get and see what kind of equations we get here. Um, let me try to think. Uh, of perhaps a scenario where I could like use the same data here and use energy considerations to get us to where we want to go. Okay, so uh, let's see what we can do. I'm going to put a pause on this and I'll, I'll try to set something else up. Um, or I might just start right off from scratch to be honest with you. Maybe, maybe another, uh, another place. Okay, uh, I, I'll see my students as soon as possible, be going to as many lectures and as many discussions as you can. Work hard with everything that's been given to you in terms of the great tutors uh, and hopefully enough material that you can look at for some, some decent study and some decent help uh, on homework and exams. Okay. Uh, take care. We'll talk to you soon.